Uh, welcome back uh, to the Ruck and Chuck Rugby channel. This week we'll be looking at the round one fixtures that have taken place in the Rugby World Cup uh, in France. And we're going to get straight into it. Eh? We're going to we're going to go into the New Zealand versus France. But first, let's welcome in uh, Ruck here. He's, uh, he's oh. happy from the weekend's results, I guess. Yeah, Chuck, what a weekend. Hey, what a weekend. 15.4 million viewers for the first game. No booze. What a game. The <laughs> first try from New Zealand. Within the first few minutes, I thought that's the statement they wanted to create right after the loss against the Spring Box. And just after that, they fell apart. France kept on grinding them. The one thing that I noticed from France was they continuously kicked behind the New Zealand defence line. And that's where two tries came from. And I really thought that was where a gap in New Zealand's defence, a, a kink in their armour were lying. And chink, perhaps... A kink in their armour. <laughs> a chink in their armour. Sorry, my Africa. <laughs> you know, Chuck. <laughs> Perhaps, but I think the five injuries they currently have is perhaps just um, getting them under. Um, yeah, who is wonder... who's out? Uh, you name those few that are just to refresh. I, I need to refresh my memory. Um, oh, did, I, did I catch yeah. you? Uh, did I catch you unawares there? You did catch me unaware, but don't worry, Chuck. Was well, this I'm... a cheeky, uh, blindsided uh, pass down there? You know. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I think I think uh, I can probably help you with it. I think uh, what's this? Uh, Shannon Frizzell's out. I know that for a yes. fact. Then uh, Barrett, Jordy Barrett's out. Then it's Tyrell Lomax. Sam um, Kane is out. Yeah, Sam Kane. Um, yeah, and then L Lomax is it the the front row? Yeah, and I think Will Jordan is out. Is he? Did he no. get injured in the in the last game? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Will Jordan and um, Imoni Narawa. Narawa. He's out as well. So, yeah. So, there's a few injuries for the All Blacks. And as I see it, they are in no rush to bring them back, I think. As I can see how the All Blacks are facing the new group, so, or the new coming up matches, is they're just going to play it out, get their yeah. groove back, get their confidence back, so that when the quarterfinal is... There, they can have their full squad up and ready. Yeah, but I mean, that's a tight group, eh? It's I think uh, people are underestimating Italy at this point. You know, it yeah, they could pro they could point. provide a shock, eh? It's a good point. The way they played against Namibia was just yeah. We will get into Namibia <laughs> just now. Let's just <laughs> focus on the. On the, oh, on the, but on that's the, that's 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 all I've got for Zealand. France versus yeah. New Zealand, really. Yeah, Anything yeah, no. So, add, yeah, no. I just thought France, they're scrumming. Um, they were good in that. Uh, they won penalties from that, and you know, if you get Tom Aramo on that boot, he's gonna he's gonna <laughs> score those points all day, all day long. And then I just noticed. I don't know if France were a bit vulnerable out wide at times, especially for that opening. To lay a try, I think it's great from New Zealand. No advantage, just going for the corner, and yeah, they paid dividends with that there. And then your yeah, Will Jordan was probably lucky to still be in the field, you know. <laughs> Could have possibly seen red because he did go for another sort of up and under, but I think he sort of slipped on that one. So it's slight mitigation, but yeah, on another day maybe he could have possibly got sent off. And yeah, you said, as you said, you know, that they, they were the good kicks in behind, you know, not straight to the play and straight into space, which, yeah, for that last try was just good, good play. <laughs> no, exactly, yeah. Chuck. That's good points that you raised, especially the ones that France are vulnerable as well, especially out wide. And the other thing I know from France is they don't have any depth in their squad. So if they can keep up their performance and if the French crowd can carry them through, that's something that we will need to wait and see. So, Chuck, tell me, what's your insights in Italy versus Namibia? What did you thought about that game? Oh, yeah, I know. I mean, Namibia, they are 
Yeah, they're not on Italy's level and coming into this game, I uh, obviously picked Italy to win this comfortably, I'd say. But Namibia did get the first points on the board, so I guess that's that was a little win for them. It was a little penalty, I think. Um, and then I think within the first 10 minutes, they got a yellow card. They, their hooker got uh, sinburned. Then from that, uh, I saw there was there was a line out that took place, and the guy that I think it was the eight who took the line out, and he completely missed everyone, and it went straight to <laughs> an Italy player, and they they scored from there straight from that. So yeah, I don't think they they train without their hooker and someone to replace him <laughs> if he's if he's off the field because that was a really bad bad throw. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, funny but... how. <laughs> It's funny yeah. how I think most of these Namibian players are actually part-time rugby players. My one, my one friend told me a story of how his teacher in school played for Namibia in the World Cup. And then he was actually, so he's a white teacher, but he, he on, rugby, on Rugby 05, he was on the game. And I just imagine how cool that must be as a kid, your teacher playing with your teacher. But in the game, he was black. And, oh, that's no. just, and that just shows you... They just assumed, how, eh? They just assumed. <laughs> and I think most of these guys, when I saw the guys played, in the, and there's a one specific video posted by Radio Rups where the, uh, the Namibian front row just re- used very explicit words to describe how tired oh, he was. Oh, yeah, he was like... You said push, I think. Was it someone yes. pushed him? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's the word you used. Um, yeah, you mustn't push, eh? <laughs> yeah, you mustn't. But I think, Chuck, I think for the most part, Namibia, you know, I think they, they're just there for the fun. <laughs> they are in yeah. France. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have been surprised if they had a few beers after the game. It's just a boys' trip out, eh, I think. For them. The boys trip out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but they, they did manage to score a great try, uh in the corner, but I, it was part because I think uh, there was a bit was a bit of a bad cover defense from Italy. I saw I don't think they shifted out wide, and there was just space there. That yeah, Namibia just exploited that in the corner, which was yeah great great on them. I think they were still down to ten at that point, but yeah, and then after that, Italy yeah they just showed their class, took the game away from Namibia, and yeah, final score was fifty two eight, which was. Yeah, something that we expected, I would say. Yeah, next on on to something else that we expected. I think you said Ireland would probably put eighty on in that game, and that final score was eighty to eight. So I don't know how much you want to talk about this, but yeah, it's a good game. Chuck, there's a I made a few predictions badly wrong this weekend, but this is one of them that I didn't get wrong. Yeah, but I was... you did say eighty. You did say eighty. I did say 80, but I was so shocked. First blood to Romania. Yeah. First score. And it was all because of Bahu Vasa, the number 10 from Romania. He's a New Zealand star. And he Is clearly he? showed his class. Yes. <laughs> and he he was by far the best player in that Romanian side. Yeah. And because, and I mean, the, made... the gather and the offload, you know, because it was yes. actually from an island ball that got played over or something like that. And then I just saw the gather and then the offload to Yeah, I thought they're gonna I thought they're gonna bottle it, to be honest. When the guy stepped inside, I was like, oh come on, dude, just like keep it to the corner. And then they just were cool, calm and collected and scored the try in professional fashion. Yeah. But the one thing that I have to commend Ireland for is the fact that they are consistent with their team selection. Mm. that's a thing that I have seen throughout the island games this year you know who's going to be picked and you know what style they were going to play they were fast paced quick hands Johnny Sexton consistently picking the gaps they are going to be a team to be reckoned with and the only way we as South Africans will be able to disrupt them is with a dominant forward back and a well communicating defending back line. But do you think uh, fatigue will play a part in if they consistently pick the same team and you've seen you've seen them speaking about the weather and how warm it is in France at the moment. 
I'm not sure how much. Yeah, and those Aries aren't used to that, eh? Yeah, no, Aries they, aren't used to rain. No, we, we play the cold. We, we don't really like the, the warmth of France, unless we're on a beach or something. <laughs> so I, I just don't <laughs> know how they're going to manage in these temperatures. But I mean, we'll have to just wait and see. It's funny that you mentioned that. And another thing that is interesting is Bundy Aki, the center of New Zealand born forming <laughs> New Zealand, like all these players, um, was, was so good. And unfortunately, against a wild world professional side like New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, England, he won't be able to run those lines. So that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a good point that you're making. He'd probably I get think... a red card knowing him. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so Ireland, Ireland's a small country. Their depth is not that deep. I don't see them going through the World Cup, but I mean, we need to wait and see. The, the performance that they put on the first game was good enough as it can get. Yeah. Um, the one other thing that they need to work on is their lineouts. They did score 12 tries, but they lose, lost a considerable amount of lineouts, and um, that's not an easy fix against a side like South Africa or Scotland, where their um, structures are just too good. You can't make mistakes like that. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, Chuck, Australia versus Georgia, the one thing that stood out for me was that the booing of coach Eddie Jones. That's something <laughs> that I didn't expect of the French fans, but, but he is apparently quite unpopular, but I love him. Um, I I hope that yeah, I don't works. understand why they don't like me. There, you know, I'm like, <laughs> what, a, what a good bloke. <laughs> no, Eddie Jones, you you can't hate him, eh? I mean, love him or hate him, <laughs> the the guy's phenomenal with his with his. Uh, okay, I mean tactics, yeah, but I mean that mouth that he has. Uh, yeah, he he just knows how to work a crowd, and get them on your side, kind of thing. But yeah, I know it's it was the. Great uh, early try there from Australia that just probably helped them, you know, set the tone. Because, I mean, they haven't been on the best of years. Um, yeah, it was great strength in that first try. And then, yeah, I know Georgia got a penalty. I think it was a charge down in the middle of the field. And then, yeah, they just got their first points on the board there. And then I see I've got you a nice short side variation, which I, I love a bit of uh, short side variation in in play. I think it uh, it keeps the defense on on their toes. You don't always expect, you know, the 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 casual, um, you know, wider field ball, so to say. So I love I love a good attack on the short side. So, and then yo, know, it was a there was a good long pass uh, for the try in the corner. I think it was. Yeah, I can't remember who scored it, but yeah, I just love when when teams, you know, vary they play because how watching Bok rugby sometimes can be you just know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. he's the first second receiver is always going to go into contact, so just yes. seeing the ball uh, in the air for a bit is always nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, yeah, break through the center from Georgia. Uh, could have done more with it, but yeah. And then uh, lose the ball and they concede, you know. I don't know if you saw the... Did you see the breakthrough in the centre? They had like a little breakthrough and then... I did not see that, no. Of, yeah, and there was a bit of support, but yes, the cleaners could have probably done more, but then they lost the ball and they conceded straight after. And, and I thought they could have probably worked it a bit more, especially in the position there, because it was like broken field and Australia didn't have much cover there, so... Yeah, but overall, I think Georgia did well to stay in it. 35-15 is... I think they can be proud proud of that. Um, but yeah, yeah Australia... it's, something, it's something that I see from especially a team that has potential. For instance, like Fiji. They, Fiji had the potential to win that game. They had chances, they could finish, but they, they well, didn't Australia, send Australia, you mean... Georgia. I, I, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just referring to two teams oh, okay. that have potential. Yeah. I think that's something that just experience counts for at the end of the day. Yeah, so definitely. I, I agree with you. There's some chances that Georgia could have picked up. But I, I and as you're talking about experience, um, yeah, I don't know if you are you ready to 
talk about the English experience under pressure and <laughs> Argentina not living up to having all this pressure being put on them as potential favorites to go through in the group. Do you think, did that, did that, uh, did that, uh, did that, uh, that pool, pool that winners, put... favorites, did you think that put them under a bit too much pressure there at the end? Chuck, that, that win irked me so much. <laughs> the chorus of swing low, I think, <laughs> agitated me and the Argentinians alike. They need to fly those South Americans up to Paris and get them there and sing some chants. Because all Argentina did was they were crashing forward and running direct lines. And all they had to do was play their normal flair game. Michael Checker had the great performance throughout the year. They were favorites. I still think they are favorites for me to win big teams this year. The first game brings a lot of jitters. Mm. There were a lot of red cards, or sorry, yellow cards in this game. Yeah. But you have to give the one man, George Ford. Oh, you need to what give a him player. What, you know, I can I just, just before, I was, I was questioning the team selection. I was like, why isn't Marcus Smith starting? Surely, you know, he's, he's such a great creative player. But then looking at Ford just absolutely pulled the strings and, and yeah. his With kicking was on card. point. Yeah, yeah. Fourth mm. minute red card. That's difficult to deal with that. And yeah, it was incredible performance from him, especially. But obviously, the whole team had to pull through for him to be in those positions. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's a great management that comes with a flash like that are very, very precious. And not only did England manage the game well, they also showed class in defence. I mean, Argentina scored three points in the first four minutes and then only scored right okay. at the end of the game. Yeah. So it was an absolute banger of a game for England. I do not think that a game like that will let them beat bigger teams. I think they still lack that that. That, that's something that you need to win bigger teams. Playing, winning a game on penalties and drop kicks is not good enough. Um, what I, mean, I want to say is why, a bit of credit, I guess. <laughs> no, but why? Why don't rugby players or flops drop kick more? It's such a beautiful sight. I mean, and it's so easy. Three points. You're not getting meters. Just drop back and slot out. Slot out three points. If you have a guy uh, like France staying in your team, you can punch sixty meters. And you are winning. And I have, I have a lot of questions about rugby players and their decisions most of the time, you know, especially watching the Springboks sit in, in a half for 30 minutes and do nothing, you know. So I always yeah. have questions about why they don't do certain things. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll come on to that. Uh, and tell me, tell me, Chuck, there's a Japan and Chile game. It yeah. was a slow start for Japan. 7-7, seven, seven, they were still 30 minutes in 7-7. Seven, seven. What happened? And then Japan just opened up the taps. Yeah, I guess it, it was a good fight from Chile, of course. But Japan, we know Japan. And I've said they're not the Japan from old. And I think uh, they showed up that a bit in the first 30 odd minutes, you know, they they were probably just finding, they went through the archives of the previous years and they were like, yeah, no, we actually Japan and we actually decent and sort of came back in the second half. But Chile did get the first points um, on the board, you know, which was great yeah. for them, um, breakthrough and then eventually went over. But then there was immediate response from Japan. And then, as you said, after that, they went to a little bit of a stalemate. After that, and then yeah. you know, head contact. If you saw, Chile, eh? is it? Yeah, I mean, first World Cup for Chile. Not not bad. Thirty minutes for them in their first World no. Cup. So no, definitely not. Congrats to them. Are the USA are not in this tournament, right? Did they take their place? Because I don't see. Yeah, any... they they took the USA. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. USA. Uh, well, I think it was Portugal. To... Portugal took the Portugal beat the USA. Oh yeah, I remember that game. Mm, <laughs> yeah, 
You know, yeah. they should go play basketball or American football, any of their own sports that they can win by themselves, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah, the another head contact. So we had uh, we had Curry, mm-hmm. and we had uh, well the head. I think it was the head contact on Matsushima. Um, but yeah, then there was right. obviously uh, another one that would come back to you later on. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah well, there was a few Japan, this game, yeah, this um, tournament this week. Yeah, yeah, but then after that, I think Japan, you know, with an advantage, um, yeah, came back and just showed their class, I guess. And we did expect them to win, and they did it quite well in the end. Not 50, 42 is okay, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but on to, uh, on to the, the main event, I would say. <laughs> I heard the uh, I'd say the main event because uh, I've heard a New Zealand pundit say that Scotland are gonna go through the island or something like that. So oh. yeah, yeah, well. some feathers there. Well, the first half was as tight as a boxer's glove. <laughs> I did not expect Colby to be in a fight, so then you know how tight the game is. Yeah, that that first half fight was everyone, or not everyone, but it was a there was some punches through, and then I thought I was well, surprised. Just, I was surprised. No like, yellow cards. Yeah, yeah. There some, some yeah. bar punching through there. Yeah, because <laughs> as soon as I saw Jensen come in, he just grabbed the guy and like, yes, like the two him. smallest guys in the field were going at it. Eh? You know, yeah. <laughs> and then something. And then even... something... Yeah, some, yeah, someone said something bad about someone's grandma in that scene. I don't know exactly. <laughs> no, but I love the way Eben but... can smile and fight through a thing. You know, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's, that's just that's... such a skill. <laughs> no, it is. Yeah. But then, yeah, I, I mean, you would expect, I can just imagine the, that halftime talk. Because when that second half started, it was simply Jasper with a strong carry, Malcolm marks another strong carry, and then Peter Steph driving, scoring the try. And I think that just broke the back of the Scottish defense. Yeah. Um, but but from the start, there was a bit of a I don't know what you think about this, Chuck. There was a bit of a tension between Finn Russell and Marnie the Book, a bit of a fly versus fly off they, game. They're sort of head. the same kind of player, in a sense. Yeah, very much. They have the same sort of skill set. Uh yeah. And so, I think most of the, the big tackle most of on Finn Russell, that was just like, yeah, not, they were nice. this is not your yeah. day. Yeah, and as, I, as I told you. Rip. <laughs> no, but as I told you, remember, it's like in, in a big game, you know, you want to make that hit in the first minute on the guy. To let him know, listen, yes. I've got your number. Don't try anything here because I'll, I'll be on you in a flash. You no, know, exactly. So all, overall, I think, it was a good performance from the box. I think we we did what we needed to do to seal the victory. It was not the New Zealand performance. I think they hold back a bit. The one thing that I have to admi- just admire from the box is that we made 95 carries. Scotland made 85. So it's 10 more carries. 10. Mm. Chuck, guess how much, how many more meters we've made. We made yes. more than 300 meters more than them on the carriers. And that's just go to show how good our forward pack is. We are a dominant forward pack and you don't want to be messing with us. Dominant front. that first half, the that wasn't dominant day. Eh? We lost two penalties on the trot day. Eh? That's not like us. So <laughs> Yeah, you're right there. Just another just another an um analysis bit here for you. Who do you think kicked the most the game? We kick the most? No. I would also think that, right? But it was Scotland. Scotland kicked more than the box in that game. We had 59 times. We kicked 59 times. They kicked 62 times. Oh, because I remember, yeah, that's quite close. Because, like, Marnie is that Marnie first. Was kicking. That was a lot of kicks. I just saw the ball go up to that wing, up to that wing, and <laughs> I just saw the ball going up. <laughs> A lot, like the most I've seen in a while from the box. Yeah, no, it was, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy we have the win. I think we can, we can finish top of the log actually. Yeah. Or 
But at this stage, it doesn't really matter. I think it's all about team preservation at the moment. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, obviously the, the main talking point from the South Africa, Scotland was uh, Marnie's kicking. And uh, I guess uh, Sia sort of touched on that in the in the media duty and then he did emphasize that uh, this is a team sport and, you know, it, it's not going to be your day every day. So you should just yeah. um, forget about what happened and just move on and you know, keep your head high sort of thing, which is good. But yeah, yeah. going forward, we we do need to pull those points. You know, in cricket, you know, catches win matches and I guess kicks win matches, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> yeah. Chuck, the last game, I just need to say something here. I think this coming weekend, I'm going to wear a Fiji shirt. I am such a Fiji supporter. I wanted them to win well so badly. And it was, they had a chance to, more than once to really just score a try. What's your take on it, Chuck? Yeah, disappointment, I would say, from my perspective, considering how the game went on. Um, you know, they, wow, what a team, dude. The, the captain. You know, to to score that that try, that first try. Did you see the the amount of strength he, he went through that defense of the world? You know, just going through two players. That's <laughs> amazing. Eh? And then so, yeah, so good. I just feel like Fiji provided much better tries than Wales did. I don't know about you. Is that your is that your take? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like you you get you get uh, scrappy tries, and then you get. PG tries, and I think <laughs> I don't want to call Wales uh, scrappy tries, but PG, yeah, no, they they scored some great tries. Like with the after that, there was the offload from Rodraja to the inside for 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 the for the other try, <laughs> and then my, one of the the highlights of the first half or towards the end of the first half was bigger shouting. Um, can't remember who 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 it was at, but he was just livid because. I think they want to play on, but then bigger was like the time's up on the clock. What are you doing? Just kick the ball out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then yeah, get yeah. in. <laughs> no, no, for sure. Yeah, you know, because I just, chuck it. If, if there's no if there's no need, just kick it out. You know, there's no point unless you even if you're in, in the opposition's half and you think you can score points, sometimes the safe bet is just to kick it out. Get in. You don't want to because just now there's a interception or something and then you so, concede on the other side exactly. and then you're down. Yeah. So exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I I want to say something, Chuck. I yes. think that's the pull of death, really. If you have Fiji, Wales, Australia, and you have Georgia, I mean there's no team in that pool that you could really say that this is a walk with. This is like a walk yeah. Who's in that who's the other all... who's the other team there? Do you know? It's um wow. <laughs> it's not let me give me Is it Portugal? A good guess. It is Portugal. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. I told you the Georgians are no real pushover, pushover sort of thing. So yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this weekend, Fiji versus Wales. Mm. You mean you mean uh no, Wales are not playing Fiji this weekend. Yeah, but oh, just Fiji to just to, yeah, just to wrap up a few things. Uh, you know, for the one Wales try, I, I think it was a cross kick or something to the side, and then one of the players from Fiji they sort of rushed out and missed the ball, kind of thing, and it was sort of an easy try in the corner for Wales. I thought he could have done better, probably waited and tackled, but yeah, and then obviously the. The the real letdown of the night, I would say, eighty minutes up on the clock, balls going to hands. Fiji have numbers. The ball goes out to the man you wanted to go out to, Rod Rodra. He sees his name in the lights. He thinks about scoring that try, dotting it down, celebrating with the boys, but then he forgets to catch the ball and run wow. with it. He catches it, knocks it on. And the game is over. Yeah, yeah, that's just... It's a cruel game, eh? It's a cruel... 
cruel game. <laughs> the game of rivalry. There's no mercy. Yeah. All about and, the bounce of the ball. Yeah, yeah. And just one one last thing. Um, what do you think about the sixty seconds clock or whatever? You know, for that pressure on the hour kicker. I, yes. Uh, I want to say it's a bit of a thing where, yeah. as a kicker, this is a, something that you wanted to know about before the World Cup, at least, and yeah. practice your routine because now it's all kicking is all about routine. It's all about getting yeah. into your rhythm, attacking your. So it could be. So they would need to work on it. I don't yeah. mind it that much, but I th- I thought there was once or twice where for Manuel book back in the book game, they actually started that clock too early, and the guy. Had like I, I don't seconds. know when. I don't know when it starts. That's the thing. It's yes. just like okay, we're gonna kick, and th- does it start like that? Like I yes, I'm not sure when it starts. So it's it's crazy. What's your thoughts? Uh, what's your thoughts on the bunker call for um for Curry? I mean, direct head on that. Yeah, yeah, England have a history. No, no <laughs> mitigation. They have a history. No mitigation. He, he's got a three-game ban. You know that. Yeah, exactly, man. Three games. It's just, it, but it's just it had. There was head contact with Fiji, Wales, South Africa, Scotland, and uh, another game. So I'm, I'm just yeah. thinking, is it really a three-game ban? That's one of the key players. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The, the Creel one is like it's it it was like more like I don't know if I'm being biased, but I, it was like more like like a side on kind of thing. Um oh did <laughs> that mess up the audio. Uh, so then uh compared to the other ones were like sort of head on kind of thing. I don't know how if I'm being too biased, but No, yeah. I think you are being, being biased, yes. <laughs> 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 But it's all it's all about taking the game as it is, and I guess that, that his, his head contact was more head on head. I would say, yeah, yeah. The point. Yeah, so that's it for this week, Ruck. I think um, it was a great uh, great weekend of uh, rugby, and we're looking forward to week two of or round two of. Uh, the Rugby World Cup and yeah, anything else you want to sign off with? I think that was a great week. I'm looking forward to next week. You're looking forward to next week. Yes, we are all looking forward to the next week of fixtures. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I'll see you around. Cheers. Thanks for watching. For more great content, please like, share, and subscribe. Click the bell icon to keep up to date with our uploads.